Wouldn't be nothing Maybe I should take that advice Go get a life or maybe get a job or something Pack it up and head back home Tell everybody I was bluffing Or maybe I'll just get out my head And focus on what I know's coming Yeah Cause I can't fall asleep at night without seeing my dreams Delusion and reality, I'm somewhere in between These voices in my head get loud and they keep telling me That I'm a fool for trusting in these wings Drinking themselves crazy tonight <laughs> Baby, I should call and say, told you I'd be right Wondering how long it was before you realized The biggest mistake of your life And now you're paying the price Oh, is it confidence or confusion? Either way, I feel like I ain't never losing Your opinion or mine, you know just what I'm choosing I gotta do this Cause I can't fall asleep at night Without seeing my dreams Delusion and reality I'm somewhere in between These voices in my head get loud And they keep telling me That I'm a fool for trusting in these wings But maybe, baby, this will fly Like
the castle tonight as Kay Maction returns as Northmore takes on Centerburg. It's the conference opener for the Trojans and Golden Knights, and it's coming your way next on the OH Report. Need a construction team that can do it all? Bo Lacey Construction delivers experience you can trust. Done right on time. With free estimates and special financing offered for roofing, siding, gutters, windows, bathrooms, decks, to the highest standards of excellence, quality, and knowledge in the industry. Bring your next project to life with Bo Lacey Construction. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health. Believe in we. Welcome into our Morrow County Jobs and Family Services pre-game show and we are live from Northmore tonight as Came Action play begins for both of these schools. Andy Jardy alongside my partner Travis Berardi. We have got ourselves an interesting matchup here to start. Both of these teams, not necessarily the starts they would like to have gotten off to already and a chance to open up conference play 1-0. You always want to get that first win so you're not at the bottom of the standings regardless of your record. Oh, absolutely. Northmore, you know, they have some injury. We know top scorer from last year, Jack Swinger, still out probably until just after Christmas. And Grant Bentley, uh, you know, had those shoulders problems against Colonel Crawford. If he's in that game, they might have won. Uh, probably, I mean, Pleasant's a very good squad, so at least a 3-1 and one record, but still 2-2. Two and two. As for Centerburg, they've just had some uh, problems completing games. A tough one against uh, Granville, but both of these teams, it's a must win. I, it's early on, I know, but this is a must win. Get on the right foot in the K-Max schedule. Get back to things as you go into the weekends. Yeah, we'll take a look here now at Centerburg. And those two losses, the combined records of those teams, 6-1. and one. So they've lost yeah. to some good competition. They took care of Utica for their only win so far this year. But under head coach John Marhefka, just 1-2 and two to start the year, but a chance to go 1-0 and oh in conference play tonight. And the biggest issue so far has been the lack of scoring offensively. Yeah, it's just uh, a little bit complacent with the ball against Granville. 24 turnovers, and some of them were just bad turnovers where they wouldn't maybe dribbling the ball around the, the perimeter, just lacks a days ago, gets stripped away, down two points the other end. They can keep, they can clean that up a little bit and, you know, crash the glass like they usually do, get a kick out. They can do some things, but three-point wise, you know, that was a big thing for them last year. Not off to a good start this year, only 22% from beyond the arc. So they got it, they have to, you know, straighten some things up. But still, this is a Centerburg squad that if they can get it together, they have the pieces to do things. I know uh, Grayson Reynolds, the leading scorer, but as you'll we'll see in our player spotlight, Andy, uh, this guy needs to uh, really do it as well. Yeah, the junior forward Trevin Harris coming in just shy of six points a game. He can get it done in the paint, though, a little over three rebounds a game, and he's averaging about a block a game. They need someone else to help out Grayson Reynolds if they're going to find a way to get a win here tonight at the Castle. Trevin Harris, one of those guys we're looking at as, yeah. you, as you take a look at those 
Centerburg Trojans love the Hoosier style right? pants. I'm not even an Indiana fan, but I just love. Oh, you gotta love the pants. The pants are great. Absolutely. Uh, Trevin Harris, he did lead the squad six points against Granville, but all in the first half. They shut him down in the second half. Reynolds didn't even score in that game, which was kind of a problem. But if they can find a balance, they can get things done. As we take a look now at the Golden Knights of Northmore under head coach Blade Tackett. This is a Northmore team, 500 on the year, scoring just over 56 points a game, giving up just over 48. And uh, it's been a struggle for them against Centerburg in recent history. Finally snapped the losing streak to them last year, uh, earlier last season in January. Should have beat them the first time around, but lost by two on a blocked shot at the end. But they got it back the second way around. Uh, that scoring average a little bit high because they played Temple Christian and beat them by 44. But other than that, they have a good defense, a physical team, as we saw in that Colonel Crawford game. But uh, just, you know, they need to go through Grant Bentley. Some of these other players that are filling in for Jack Swinger need to get it going. And once he gets back, if they can continue to play strong, play hard basketball, they're going to be a team to beat in the Northern, in the, I almost said Northern 10, but in the <laughs> KMAC here this season. Yeah, we'll step aside here as we get ready for the national anthem. Uh, one thing to note, too, with Northmore, both of their wins this year have happened when they've scored over 60 points. So 2-0 when they score 60 or more points. And we'll step aside here now for the national anthem as they get set. I'm excited we have a pep band here yes, tonight, all too. Yes, the Northmore so. pep band is great. And also on the PA, our good uh, Ken Parrott, my color commentator yes. for football. He's first time doing... Uh, basketball tonight, so he is the one down there. Let's send it down for the anthem. job by the Northmore Pep Band. As always. As always. Take a look at our player spotlight here for Northmore and who else but uh, Mr. 1000 himself, Grant Bentley. A incredible career he's had here as a Golden Knight. And another dominating season so far for him as well. Just under 15 points and six rebounds a game. And in that last game, Travis, he eclipsed the 1,000-point career mark. Yeah, one of the lone bright spots of that game, but he wanted to do it at his home court. He scored 14 points in four minutes against Temple Christian, but was able to get off the rest of the game, rest that shoulder, and get it here against Ple uh, Pleasant. They had it down to 10 points in the third quarter, missed a layup to make it eight, and then Pleasant hits three straight threes. It changed the complexion of the game. But for this, yeah. Grant Bentley, one of the best scorers in Northmore history. Yeah, one of four in Northmore history. Uh, to get to 1,000 points. He's 28 points shy from moving into third, so we could see that tonight, but what a special moment there. Just to be able to do that at home with your family, oh, yeah. fans, everyone in attendance. Such a great kid, too. Yeah, just a really uh, incredible moment for the senior, Grant Bentley. Take a look at our keys to victory here, starting with the Trojans of Centerburg. I'm going with high percentage shots, and what I yes. mean by that, too, they have to limit the empty possessions. It's been a struggle for them to score this year. They cannot afford to have one and done trips or this is going to get out of hand. Absolutely. And also ball control. They need to set up those high percentage shots by controlling the ball. Don't turn it over. No dumb turnovers. Don't try and force it inside. Get the open look. Get the open shot. And they should be in good shape. On the Golden Knights side of things, sir, keys to victory. Travis, I know you had lunch with the team yes, earlier today. I'm going with don't play with your food. And what I mean by that, Come out, take care of them early. Do not let Centerburg hang around. The longer you let the Trojans hang around, the more confident they are going to get. This is your home opener in conference play. You have to defend your home court. 
take care of business, get the job done early. And both these teams lost. Northmore, get a bounce back game. You get a good victory here at home, get you 1-0 in the conference, get you back over 500, and you are in good shape as you go into the week of Christmas. Take a look at our starting lineups, and it is a little bit of a change on the Centerburg side. Bennett Hill slides into the starting five tonight, along with Grayson Reynolds, Isaiah Suley, Trevin Harris, Ryder Scott, and on the Golden Knight side of things, it's Mr. Bentley, Hunter Falk, Drew Hammond, Cole Kuffman, Bryson Kearns. Cole Kuffman sitting in there for Jack Swenger. He did a good, he's done a good job so far at the point, which is a help because when Jack Swenger gets back, he can be one of those key pieces to help things out when we get into uh, the heart of the schedule after Christmas. That is our Morrow County Jobs and Family Services pregame show, and we are now underway from the castle. Andy Jardy alongside Travis Berardi, thank you so much for joining us here as KMAC is back. KMAC Trav on a KMAC Friday night here with KMAC Jardy. I don't know, KMAC Jardy. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure see. it out. Gold Knights and their man. Trying to figure it out here offensively, too. Harris drives in, feeds inside, and we've got a block underneath. Kind of a late call there. Let's take a look at the replay. It, yeah, Cuffman kind of ran into him. I, yeah, he kind of threw the body at him. I think that's what ended up being the foul call there. And actually, it might have been a good foul because there was an open layup on the other end of that pass. Swing it outside. Three ball up and no good. And... Northmore pulls down the rebound. That's Drew Hammond. He's going to be, he's the replacement for one Max Lauer, graduated last year, the big man underneath. Uh, had a double-double in their victory over Elgin with 11 rebounds. He's going to need to do that tonight. Pull-up jumper off the glass is good, and Northmore on the board first. Oh, and did I mention he has a good mid-range game as well? Almost a steal going the other way, but a nice deflection nonetheless. Let's take a look at the replay. Just a great pull up, using the glass. With the sweet kiss! You don't see that too often. You like, you love to see it. Hey, it's there. Might as well use it. Banks are open here on a Friday night. You know, they're open a little bit later for the holidays. Absolutely, they have to be. Nice feed inside, up off the glass and good. Ties things up at two, Ryder Scott. And there's that good ball movement that we're talking about from Centerburg. If they can get the good high percentage passing, they get those looks. Kearns gets in, unable to convert. Trojans coming the other way. Pushing Not the tempo a little bit. Nice feed inside and the ball knocked away. It's going to be a foul against Northmore. Take a look at the replay. On that last bucket from Ryder Scott to tie things up. Uh, interesting that that was not a shooting foul, Travis. I thought they... Well, what's worse is that's on Kuffman. Yeah. So he's going to have to take a seat now as A.J. Bauer will come in. And look for A.J. Bauer. He has a unique shooting style from beyond the arc. You'll like this, Andy. That pass off the hands and a turnover the other way. So tough possession there for Centerberg. Yeah, another turnover that didn't have to be there. Again, forcing the issue. That's something they just need to get out of their own heads. They need to just calm things down, make the high percentage plays. That's how they got their first hoop. Kick out for three is up and no good. Coming down with the board, though, as Kearns unable to get the second chance, but Centerberg throws it back in. Northmore keeps possession. A lot of contact, no call, and it's off the Trojans. It will stay here with Northmore. Yeah, somehow it stayed in. Hunter Falk took it in, got the body, but I'm guessing Ryder Scott, he had position. Hunter Falk didn't really get too much contact off of it. Nice feed to Kearns, but that shot rejected, but that one counts and one for the Golden Knights. Bryson Kearns has had a very good start to this season for Blade Tackett. Last year they had more played more guard play with Max Lauer. This year they have the ability to play underneath with Kearns and Drew Hammond to really even things out and open up that outside shot. It's the first foul on Centerberg. Trevin Harris called for it. Mr. Jardy, what do you think about the new foul rule? Uh, I hate it. I, I, will, I will be blunt and just I will say that I don't like it. I was completely flabbergasted by it when I did uh, a game for the first time this year because I, I didn't honestly I didn't know the rule, um, and I thought you know what let's sleep on it let's give it some thought, 
but I, I do not like it. And I was gonna, I'll get into it more once we inevitably have to sit through it, but it's, I'm not a fan. Driving all the way, shot. No good, but a foul called. Hunter Falk did this in their win against Centerberg last year. The ability to drive down the lane and the way he shoots it, he goes with that offhand and creates that contact. We tried to see it earlier, but it was just a little good defensive possession, but this time he's able to get the foul. Suli picks up the foul and first free throw no good. This is a point of emphasis this year for Northmore's free throw shooting. Uh, that's Typically, this, this team over the years have been struggling from the free throw line, at least since I've started covering them back in 2016. They can fix that. They'll be able to really play some good ball down the stretch. That's a nice play by Kearns. Yeah, anything to just disrupt the, the flow is always a plus. As Centerberg has struggled offensively, and just deflections like that, now you're forced to inbound it. Maybe you get a turnover if you're Northmore. Anything to just make it more difficult. Pull-up jumper is a little too short, rims out. And that's just, you know, I talked about high percentage shots. That's just not one right there that you need if you're Centerberg. The, the deep two, just it's not, it's not worth it. Talking with Blade Tackett before the game, Sometimes Centerberg throws it up at the basket just to get the offensive rebound to yeah. open up their offense that way, but you saw the Golden Knights, two guys in there to get the board. Hammond, floater comes up a little short. Trojans have the rebound, and it's knocked away. Not sure who it went off of. Haven't seen a signal yet. It will be Northmore basketball. Yeah, it went off of Suley last. Second turnover against the Trojans. Deep three, and it's Woo! good. <laughs> Mr. 1017 now. But on the other end, look at that. It's a quick answer. And that's what Centerberg likes to do, get into that transition as Trevin Harris gets the hoop. And Blake Tackett's going to call a timeout. But Grant Bentley, man, he sh you've seen that from him quite a few times this season. Yeah, I mean, that's way beyond the arc. And that hit, I don't think, any part of the rim. That was about as smooth as it gets for Mr. Bentley. Which made it, at the moment, a seven-point lead, but a quick answer in transition. And also talking with Tackett before the game, they – expected off of a make for Centerberg to walk the ball up the set in their offense. Kind of threw a wrench in that one, oh. went right up and threw him off. And I think that's why Coach Tackett took that time out, is to say, hey, they're going to try and push it. Let's change things up here defensively. Maybe get into that full court press that they like to, that three-quarter court press to really shut that off. But it's a good timeout, especially early on when you see something like that by a coach. Harris was our player we spotlighted in the pregame show. 5.7 points per game, second on the team, and he makes the free throw to convert the three-point play. Makes this a 9-5 game. Northmore trying to answer on the other end. Three ball Woo. is good. Hunter Folk. Toilet bowled that one around. <laughs> Got the hometown bounce. And here we go the other way again. Golden Knights out in transition. Layup, no good. I think Falk was expecting a foul to be called. Didn't get it, but it will stay with the Golden Knights. As you take a look at Falk, had the shoulder squared up. He was ready to shoot as soon as he got that. Yeah, Falk is one of those players. He can have really good nights. Sometimes he'll have an off night, but his defense makes up for it. He, is, he can be a complete player out there. What a pass. Yeah, what a find inside. Hammond with the circus shot is going to draw the foul. But what a feed inside. Got his own miss, though, and now he's got a chance to earn him from the free throw line. It's the third offensive board already by the Golden Knights in their six rebounds. A little 
little too strong, misses the first. And something else that Coach Tackett probably loves to see right now, four players scoring already in the books. Second one, no good. So an empty possession there for Northmore. After a good look inside, unable to convert it and couldn't get it at the free throw line either. See if the Trojans have an answer here now. Down seven, just over three and a half to go here in the opening quarter. Scott looking for help, gives it off to Reynolds. Reynolds pulls up and shot a little short. Folk pulls down the board. They're getting the looks, they're just short on it. Folk drives in between the trees, shot up off the glass, but yep. called for a travel. Yeah, well, you'll see it here on the replay right here, shuffle right there. Yeah. First Golden Knight turnover, however. So where does Centerberg go for offense here? There's a nice feed inside. Off the glass, it's good. Trevin Harris, it's always a good answer to that question. Yeah, right immediately you find out who it is. And that was a beautiful pass by Reynolds on the fake. Harris has five of the seven points for Centerberg as we're now just under three minutes here. First quarter, Hammond pulls up. Three is good. Wasn't sure if his foot was on the line, but it's a three for Drew Hammond. Third Golden Knight with the three-pointer here today. And what that'll do is really open up that inside game that they've been going at as well. You can see the Golden Knights switch on those screens as well. And that shot, or that pass stolen away. Northmore slows it down. Isaac Black and Logan Caudill at the scores table for the Golden Knights. Jack Lawrence in for Centerberg at the table. Ill-advised pass by Kearns there, and now the Trojans trying to get something in transition, but just unable to do it. And you can see the frustration as that possession led to nothing, and Grayson Reynolds just kind of put his hands on his face like, oh, my goodness. This is a team that just gets in their own way, some way sometimes just because they're trying to go 150 miles an hour when they only need to go 100. Yeah or they're trying to find that eight-point shot that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. You just got to get the one and then start building off of that as we get a foul far away from the action here. Blaine Ball picking it up. Yeah, it was created by Hunter Falk. Had that arm, didn't extend it, though, created some of the contact and gets the foul. And now the next foul, non-player control, will put the Golden Knights at the line. Turnaround, no good from Bentley. Reynolds brings it up. Three ball is up, in Ooh. and out. But a good look from the Trojans. Bennett Hill just unable to connect. Yeah, that looked like that was going to be a nice answer to what this guy had earlier. Corner oh. three is good. Are they the Golden Knights or is this Golden State? They are dropping threes from all over. When Grant Bentley's on, he is on. And you saw from that deep three, it might be a good night for him. Fourth three-pointer made here in this opening quarter. Nice layup inside. Count the bucket. What an answer there. Trevin Harris goes to the line to try and convert the three-point play now. But that's what Centerberg's going to need. They're going to need somebody to take over right now and keep up with the Golden Knights. And that's the second time he's been able to do just that with an and one after a three. Both times, I think, after Bentley's shots as well. Amazing, the symmetry of the game sometimes. Falk with it, under a minute to go here. Good opening quarter for the Golden Knights. They lead by eight, looking to push it back out to double digits. But a one and done trip here. Now the Trojans a chance to cut into this lead and get some momentum here going into the second quarter. Pump fake gets both defenders up in the air. Shot a little short, but there for the rebound. But it's going to go over to Northmore. He didn't need to fade away from there. If he went up strong to the hoop, probably would have got a foul into the line. But now the Golden Knights with a chance to end the quarter with possibly a bucket or at least, at the worst, an eight-point lead. I think he was surprised, honestly, by how, how open this he is, ended up being. This is true. Just under 20 to go. Golden Knights looking to hold for the last shot here. 
Now they're going to come into their play. Feed over to Hammond from the free throw line. No good. Chasing down the board, though. Bentley, turnaround, three at the buzzer. Comes up a little short. Oh, but the shot, does the shot count? It does. It's a Butte Clark. It's a Butte Clark indeed. 20 to 10, Northmore after one. We'll have the second quarter for you here on the other side, live and free on the OH Report. Need a construction team that can do it all? Bo Lacey Construction delivers experience you can trust. Done right, on time. With free estimates and special financing offered for roofing, siding, gutters, windows, bathrooms, decks, to the highest standards of excellence, quality, and knowledge in the industry. Bring your next project to life with Bo Lacey Construction. here inside the castle where Northmore has built themselves a double digit lead after one 20 to 10 as you take a look at the buzzer Drew Hammond I didn't think they were going to be able to get another shot off but he proved me wrong that's a tough shot too underneath the basket two guys on you just threw it up over the head great pass to Bentley and he goes up and unable to get it but there, there he is again for the rebound and put back Drew Hammond quickly the other way up and good Trevin Harris, who had himself a first quarter, picking right up where he left off. Golden Knights with six. Well, that was a late charge call, but I think, well, we'll take a look and see for yourselves what you thought about it. Boy, there's not a uh, lot of contact there. He was, his momentum was taking him down. Maybe a bit of a bump, but I think he sold that well. Yeah, there's no way Hunter Folk's arm there caused him to fall down. That was a... Uh, it was a good acting job, I thought. Third Golden Knight turnover, but that last shot, two offensive boards before the end of the quarter led to that layup, so the Golden Knights really controlling the boards here early on. And Trevin Harris has been doing it all for the Trojans. He's got 10 points as Reynolds three, no good. Northmore pulls down the board. Harris, though, comes away with the steal, puts it up, Trevin Harris playing out of his mind right now. He came in only averaging 5.7 points per game. He's got 12. Of the 14 it's points. It's unreal. But nobody else is scoring for Centerberg, and it's allowing Northmore to get back, but Harris doing it on the other end, too, with a block. I thought Bentley got away with the travel, too, and look who else. Oh, but he misses the layup. Harris, though, gets his own miss. And what do we have called here? Boy, the, the far official made the call. I think it was Harris on the he was on the sideline when he caught it. So he stepped out of bounds, no foul. Just interesting that that official made the call. Well, the other official didn't say anything about it, so he trusted him, him enough. But finally, it looked like Centerberg was getting something going there. It's just a tough break after the block. And another shot altered and knocked out of bounds. We see Trevor Brubaker. Well, I was just about to say we see him in the game now, but he's been <laughs> subbed out. But Brubaker had himself a nice uh, JV game, finishing with 22 points in the Golden Knights' 53-42 win. He played three quarters, so he sat out the first. He can play the rest of the way, though, as the Golden Knights turn it over again. Yeah, Suli coming away with the steal. Harris left open for three. He's got it. Trevin Harris cannot be stopped right now. He's a one-man wrecking machine. Trojans playing with some momentum, Travis. Yeah, Harris carrying his squad. That shot off the glass, Harris pulls down the board. A lot of contact, no foul called. Eighth Centerberg turnover though. Pull up three is too strong. But coming down with the board is Kearns. 
And they swing it around. Hammond kicks it back out. Folk for three, no good. But Hammond chases down another board. He pulls up for three. Comes up short, and the Trojans come away after playing about a, what was that, 45 seconds of defense. I a can't keep count of how many <laughs> offensive boards the Golden Knights have right now, and they can't finish. Who else? Here goes Harris. He pulls up. Too strong. Great job by Bentley there to stop his momentum and force the jump shot. Finally, Harris is stopped on a possession, though. It's Harris 7, Hammond 2 in the second quarter. They're the only two that have been able to put the ball through the hoop. Folk, a lot of contact, draws the foul. Once again, doing what he does best, and that's drawing a foul. Great spin there, and then just goes right into Ball, forcing his second foul. Blaine Ball picks up his second foul. Looks like Bennett Hill will be subbing in for him. A.J. Bauer as well for the Golden Knights. Free throw no good for Hunter Folk. Golden Knights two of six from the charity stripe so far. Is Grant Bentley going to take a little bit of a breather? Ryder Scott in for Centerberg as well. Falk one of three from the line so far tonight. Makes that. Now two of four. Knocked out of bounds. And who was it? Hunter Falk with a hand in there. Yeah, just comes flying in. Got to be ready when you're sitting uh, in those couple rows down there. You're right on the court. Great atmosphere here at the castle where you're right on top of the play. Yeah. And there's a good crowd on hand tonight here, too. A lot of people up here with us. And another one. Hunter Folk right now like bees on a pop can. And honestly, if Folk lets that go, it's a turnover because yeah. Reynolds was going back door. Kind of bailed him out, but still a great play by Folk. Yeah, that's so instinctual when you just see that ball go up and you try and go and get it. Suli will try and set up the Centerberg offense. Gets it over to Hill. Harris thinking about it. He's got the hot hand. Hill drives in, fakes the shot, kicks it back out. Three ball is up and a little too short as Grayson Reynolds continues to have an off night so far. Yeah, and it continues from Tuesday night when he was unable to score. But he's, all it takes is just one to go through I was just going to say, he's just yeah. got to see one go through, Travis. You're absolutely right. Falk runs out of room, gets it back to Bauer. Under four to go here, second quarter. <laughs> and an errant throw there. And it's... Yeah, it was oh, touched by Centerberg on that. I was going to say, that should have been over and back, but Centerberg touched it first. Oh. But Hammond throws it right back to Centerberg. See if Reynolds can get going. Picked up his dribble. Three from the corner is up. No good. And Northmore comes away with it. They've got numbers if they want it. Pull up. In Ooh. and out. And coming down with the board and is Bennett Hill, and he's going to get fouled as well. Yeah, just a little too aggressive there. That's the third time I've seen a ball halfway down the hoop and bounce back out. It's the second foul on Bryson Kearns. So what has changed? And we're going to get a timeout here. It's a perfect time for me to ask you this question. What do you think has changed for Centerberg here in the second quarter as you see they've outscored him 7-3 to three and made this a six-point game? Uh, I don't think much has changed from the first quarter with Trevin Harris just <laughs> continually getting good looks and getting good buckets. But on the other side, Northmore just, you know, some of the shots that they made in the first quarter have not hit. They're kind of pressing things a little bit because Harris continues to step his, keep his foot on the gas and keep Centerberg in this. If he make, misses a couple of those shots there in that second quarter, I think Northmore's still comfortable and they might make some of those shots, but it seems like they're pressing just a little too much. But on the other side, Centerberg, they're playing their ball right now. As you saw right here with the timeout, they're up 7-3 in the quarter. Yeah, and I to me, it seems like Centerberg is comfortable now. They mm -hmm. were kind of all over the place there in that first quarter, but 
you could kind of sense a, a shift in the momentum, I thought, from the Trojans. Once Harris just kind of went off, uh, he's been going off all game, but especially to start that second quarter, some big buckets, you could, you know, the, the bench was a little more into it. And they've just kind of had a little bit more pep in their step here, I think, in the second quarter, and they find themselves in just a two-possession game with the ball. This was 20 to 10 after one. And the question is, will Harris continue this hot playing or is he going to cool down and that's when Northmore takes control? Well, I think the interesting thing, too, is he's they've done a good job of trying to get someone else going as there's one to fall for Grayson Reynolds. Does that get him going? The nice runner had the open look. Easy bucket, but then he's going to get called on the other side as we'll take a look at his replay. Yeah, Reynolds just gets the floater to go. He's had a couple almost go down, but now that he sees one go through, see if that gets him going. That's just his first foul. Second of the quarter. Boy, some miscommunication there. Golden Knights fortunate to keep possession. Bauer pulls up from three. Missed everything, so Centerberg chance to make this a one possession game. That's a double yep. dribble. Suli got himself uh, kind of just caught there. and Ninth Trojan turnover. Mm. Golden Knights out rebounding Centerberg right now, 18 to 10. Oof. Nine to two on the offensive glass. But only down four despite that. That's, that's to me, you got to feel good if you're Centerberg. Oh, another one just in and out. What they do to these rims? A lot of the shots were going down in the JV game, but Harris for three. He's got it. Oh, my goodness. Trevin Harris. This is unreal. He's got the shooting stroke tonight. Bauer with it, pulls up, tough shot. Gets it to go though, his first points of the night. They desperately needed a bucket there and Bauer comes through. Harris feeling it, lays it up. Offensive, Offensive foul. foul. And another play by a Northmore Golden Knight where you make a bucket on one side, you come up with a defensive play on the other. That'll be Harris's second. And you love to see two Harris immediately went down to pick him up. That's his second foul, though. He is going to stay in the game. Minute 46 to go until halftime. Well, now we have Although you might, they might Jack have. Lawrence coming to the table. We'll see if he takes him out. And he will, yeah. yeah. And he gets a I, nice ovation from I the like Trojan that, faithful. I like that call by Coach Marhefka. Absolutely. Even if Northmore goes on a little bit of a run, they do what they need to do here in the first half, and he won't get that third foul to where he may have to you know, play a little bit less uh, aggressive in the second half. Three ball up and oh. in and out again. Bentley's got two tonight, but he just couldn't get that one to fall. I think it's the fifth time. Third time Northmore's had a ball, like I just said, go in and out. Reynolds drives in. Another floater falls for him. He's made his last two shot attempts now. And that's an opportunity for Northmore to take another charge there, but they just let him float. Brubaker handling it. He pulls up. Deep two, no good. No one there for the rebound. Another four shot. And Centerberg has a chance to take the lead. A minute to go here. Three ball is a little short. And trying to save it, and he's able to. Layup off the glass, no good. And Northmore survives that possession. Three is up. Oh, my goodness. It's unbelievable. But I'm not sure that's the shot you needed right there. Bentley was open enough. That's what he does. And honestly, he's been so close. A couple of them been so close to hitting that. Reynolds gets it, drives in, and unable to get it to fall. And now numbers the other way. Nice feed up, and it's in for A.J. Bauer. But a great pass from Brubaker with his head up to see him open. Man, the lid mostly on both sides here. Just Seven seconds barely to off. Go. Reynolds has it. Reynolds to tie. 
No good. He's going to, nah, the time will run out. And that was an entertaining first half, Travis. Absolutely. One. Trevin Harris, my goodness. 27-24, Northmore leads. Stick around. We'll have halftime stats and analysis for you. Coming up here live and free on the OH Report. Need a construction team that can do it all? Bo Lacey Construction delivers experience you can trust. Done right, on time. With free estimates and special financing offered for roofing, siding, gutters, windows, bathrooms, decks, to the highest standards of excellence, quality, and knowledge in the industry. Bring your next project to life with Bo Lacey Construction. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health. Believe in we. Tonight's K-Mac Boys action brought to you live and free on the OH Report thanks to our generous sponsors, Andy Bauer, Edward Jones, financial advisor. Whether you're planning for retirement, saving for college, grandchildren, or just trying to protect the financial future of the ones you care about most, Andy can develop specific strategies to help you achieve your goals. Ohio means jobs, Morrow County. Need a current job list? Help with your resume or practice interviewing? Morrow County, Ohio means jobs provides many services that can assist you. Stop in or give them a call at 419-946-8480. Once again, 419-946-8480. Northmore Athletic Boosters. Northmore Athletic Boosters raise funds to support our Golden Knights student athletes, coaches, and community. Go Knights! Morrow County Job and Family Services. Morrow County Hospital, providing great care locally so patients do not have to travel far to receive quality expert health care. And Bo Lacey Construction, experience you can trust, done right and on time. Thank you all for allowing us to be live and free this evening when we come back. The Morrow County JFS Halftime Report. Need a construction team that can do it all? Bo Lacey Construction delivers experience you can trust. Done right, on time. With free estimates and special financing offered for roofing, siding, gutters, windows, 
bathrooms, decks, to the highest standards of excellence, quality, and knowledge in the industry. Bring your next project to life with Bo Lacey Construction. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health. Believe in we. Time now for our Morrow County Jobs and Family Services halftime show. And what an entertaining first half we had between Northmore and Centerburg with the Golden Knights leading 27-24 midway through as you get a look there at the star of the first half. Trevin Harris had himself a half, Travis. 18 of Centerburg's 24 points. Kid was on another level shooting the ball. Absolutely. He was just... He was on. He has kept his squad in this game so far. Yeah, coming into tonight, he was second on the team in scoring, but only at 5.7 points per game. And he has 18 here in the first half. And he's the reason why they're still in this thing. Yeah, 18 of 24 points. Uh, Golden Knights went on a bit of a cold streak there to end the first half as well, and he took advantage there to allow them to get back right into this game as we take a look at the halftime stats. Yeah, Northmore led this thing after one, 20 to 10, but it was an entirely, it's usually a tale of two halves, but we got a tale of two quarters to start this thing because Centerberg flipped the script and outscored Northmore 14 to seven in the second quarter. Grayson Reynolds started to find his rhythm there towards the end of that second quarter too. Couldn't buy a bucket to start, but then he saw one floater go in, made another one. He's starting to find his his, uh, his confidence again shooting. But the turnovers for Centerberg, Travis, and and just getting killed offensively yeah. on the on the offensive rebounds is yeah. probably why they're down three. Yeah, Northmore twenty offense. 20 rebounds, nine offensively compared to only four offensive rebounds in the 16 for the Trojans. Balanced attack by the Golden Knights as we take a look at the individual scorers for Northmore. Nine points from Drew Hammond, six from Bentley. Could have had 12, but a couple go went in and back <laughs> out. They had a tough break there. Five from Falk, four for Bauer, three for Kearns. We take a look also at the numbers from Grant Bentley. Two threes, two total field goals. Our player spotlight, he had six points. Then on the other side, as I met, we mentioned a little bit ago, Trevin Harris leads the way. 18 points, two threes, seven total field goals. Grayson Reynolds with four points towards the end of the half. And then Ryder Scott also has two points for them. Yeah, I felt like Bentley could have had like 20 points in that first half. It seemed like every shot he put up was just in and out. But uh, as you see, Coach John Marhefka talking to his squad before they start this second half. And Trevin Harris, you know, he's chomping at the bit to get back out there with the performance he had. What do you do if you're Northmore here? Uh, 
because they had control of this game, and it's it's a one possession game here as we start the second half. Well, they're gonna they're gonna focus a little bit more on Harris tonight, uh, keep it on Reynolds, but they're on a spot. They like this other end of the court. They usually shoot when they practice. They're down on the end that they're going to now, so maybe that helps out a little bit. We'll see if the rims are just as friendly for them down here compared to the other side. But um, yeah, they, they have to focus. Trevin Harris is the reason why Centerberg's in this. They have to contain him if they want to keep this lead. So that is our Morrow County Jobs and Family Services halftime show. Second half action underway here in the castle. Andy Jardy alongside Travis Berardi. Thank you for joining us here on this unseasonably warm Friday in December. And that shot to tie it is no good. Northmore comes away with possession, a one and done trip for Centerberg. Had a few too many of those. Pretty sure that was Sue Lee's first attempt of the evening. It was. Harris brings it up, gives it to Suli. Suli, nice, nice pass. pass inside. And it's a one point game again. Ryder Scott gets his second bucket of the night. And once again, that was the pass that Centerberg needs to throw to get the open look. Didn't have to force that one. Falk has it. Spin move off the glass, no good but another offensive rebound for Northmore. They dominated in that part of the game in the first half. And really, that's what's kept them in the lead. Yeah. Golden Knights trying to find some sort of consistency on the offensive side of things. as another shot, just no good. The lid still on the hoop on Northmore's side. Great play by Kearns to strip that out because it looked like Harris was about to give Centerberg the lead. And interesting too, he might it, you could make a case maybe that that should have been an offensive foul as well, but it's going to just be knocked out of bounds and stay with them. I think it was the fact that both players were still moving going that way. It should have been what the call was earlier on that offensive foul against Hunter Falk. Right. And you can see they are trying to get the ball inside. But the pass, a little too lazy. Grant Bentley read that perfectly. Draws the foul, count the bucket. Boy, anytime Northmore has needed a big bucket, Grant Bentley has answered the call. Great take. Even with the bad shoulder, goes right into the defense, then puts it up with his right hand in, and a chance to extend this to two possessions. Second foul on Ryder Scott. And the free throw is good. I was talking with Grant before the game. His 1,000th point came on the front end of two shots. And he, he looked at his buddies when he was going to the shoot this. He said, I'm not making the back end if I make the first one. <laughs> he made the first one, had all the pop and circumstance of getting the 1,000 points, gave the ball to his parents, came back to the line as a great shot there by Reynolds and missed the second free throw. <laughs> good answer by Reynolds as he's now up to six points, makes it a one possession game again. And again, that transition out of the made bucket was the key there. And Harris almost came away with the steal, but his foot was out of bounds as he tried to save it. But here you get a look at Reynolds turn around. He's just getting that little floater to go. Yeah, and Hunter Falk went for the steal, overplayed it a little bit, and that allowed that open lane for the hoop. That's just a struggle to get in. And jump ball, possession arrow is going to keep it here with the Golden Knights. But you're seeing Centerberg starting to push its weight around. Yeah. Trying to, they're trying to take momentum back right now, and they have it mostly, and that turnover is going to help. Yeah, that pass just uh, ill-advised there. Reynolds fakes the pass, pulls up. Shot no good. And a one-and-done possession. Folk brings it up for the Golden Knights. This has been tough for Centerberg. Every time they have a chance to tie or take the lead, they just have not been able to score. And yeah, Northmore's just got to do a better job, too, of keeping possession. Too many turnovers as there's another one right on cue. It'll go back over to Centerberg. I mean, you have to give this Trojans team a lot of credit because Northmore came out and – they didn't, like as I said, they did not play with their food. They came out, they were draining threes all over, and this looked like they were going to run Centerberg out of the gym, but the Trojans just kind of weathered the storm, and now they're playing with a ton of confidence. 
And that's exactly what they needed after getting kind of run off their own court against Granville, but both teams did. Harris misses the shot, but he's fouled. He'll go to the line with a chance to tie it. And if that's on Cuffman, it's his third. I think it was. Yes. And misses. He is human. He had been perfect <laughs> from the line. He was two of two, and I feel like he's made every shot tonight. Bauer checks back in for Northmore. Short on that one. And he comes away with it, goes up, and he's going to go back to the line, a chance to make up for those two missed free throws. Harris just wants it more. Honestly, that's what it is right now. It's, a, it's an effort thing. Wow. That's just – it's one player carrying his team right now. It's incredible, yeah. And he misses another free throw. To ask him what he, like, had for lunch or <laughs> breakfast today. Definitely not Wendy's. <laughs> but he, again, unable to convert at the free throw line, so he's missed four straight. That's a big, empty couple possessions there as Falk. A lot of contact, no foul. Suli gets it up in transition. Swings it back out. Reynolds wide open for the lead. No good. And now Northmore trying to push the pace. What an attempt at a save, but he throws it. It's an open three for Northmore. No good. And foul underneath. Great rebound. Great put back by Hunter, by not Hunter Falk, but by Grant Bentley there. Just showing his muscle. That'll be Scott's third foul. A little bit of foul trouble for both teams now, at least uh, with one guy each. Scott with three fouls. Kuffman took with three as well. And boy, the free throw line not living up to its name here in the second half. No one's made one yet. Had about seven bounces along the rim before it bounced out. Next one, Bentley just said, I'm just going to go nothing but net so that doesn't happen. <laughs> Always a wise strategy. Ten points now for Grant, the first Golden Knight in the double figures. A lot of contact, no foul, and nothing underneath. Bentley got the, got the block off of that. Hill's shot was no good. Lawrence unable to convert it as well. And now Northmore, can they go on a run and push this lead back out? They led by as many as 10. There's a nice spin move inside. Hunter Falk gets it to go. Falk has one of the most pure spin moves in the K-Mac. Three is up and no good. Northmore going to chase it what down. What a save. And it is saved. Hunter Falk again. Bauer gives it over to Falk now. Falk driving in, gets his defender up, but it, able to block it, and now the other way, it's Reynolds. Reynolds lays it up and in. Falk tried to do too much there after making that turnaround bucket. Turns into points, and Centerberg once again back to within a possession. Reynolds, after not scoring in the first quarter, now up to eight points. Kearns, turnaround, his shot, good. We got a foul going the other way. Does the bucket, the bucket will, bucket count. will count. So Kearns gets his second bucket of the night. He's got five. I think they gave the foul to A.J. Bauer, which is his first. Yes. Team's third of the quarter. But now the Golden Knights on back-to-back -back possessions. With a turnover sandwich in between, I should say. Two out of three possessions with buckets after that cold spell in the second quarter. Yeah. Centerberg's been able to hang around, and that three rims in and out. Lawrence, though, able to pull down the board. Suli looking to get it inside, unable to. Gives it back to Harris. Ball knocked loose. Good pressure defensively here from Northmore. Yeah, Brubaker back into the game. Suli pulls up. Goes after his missed shot, gets it, but unable to convert. Now Northmore starting to seize control a little bit here in this third quarter. Putback is no good. 
Kearns didn't need to force that back up so quickly. Reynolds thought about three, fakes it, goes in, lays it up, no good. Bentley pulls down I the board. I think it's just that hoop down here <laughs> that's just off. <laughs> it's, it's something. Now I see why Northmore does like shooting down on this end, like you mentioned. Bentley, three. No good. Harris goes after it. He got possession of it. Nice pass. Up to Lawrence. Lawrence lays it in. His first point. And once again, Northmore with a chance to extend. Can't. Centerberg with a bucket. Back to one possession. Yeah, it's oh, and there's a steal going the other way. Bennett Hill picked his pocket. Hill out of control layup. Crowd wanted a foul, but good defense by Brubaker. Made up for the turnover. Swings it out, gets his defender up. Nice pump fake. Hammond. Short. And Reynolds comes down with it. Reynolds to Suli from the corner. Can't get it to go, but Reynolds gets the board, and he's just a little bit short. Make a house <laughs> out there. One minute to go in this third quarter. What a game this has turned out to be. Expect nothing less from some came action. And another empty possession. Both teams just trading missed shots here. Suli slices through the defenders and makes it a one-point game. He's on the board now. Trojans winning the quarter by two. Golden Knights going to take the last shot. 30 seconds to go here. Brubaker with the ball. He's harassed by a couple of Trojans. And that ball is knocked away, out of bounds. It's going over to Centerberg. Another Northmore turnover as Reynolds pumps his fist to the Trojan faithful. Golden Knights had six turnovers in the first half. They had five now in this third quarter. It, it felt like they had a moment there about two minutes ago where they were kind of starting to seize control again of this game, but they just have not been able to put the ball through the hoop and they've allowed Centerberg to hang around and they're feeling it here, a chance to take the lead going into the fourth quarter. 10 seconds to go, Reynolds with the ball. Reynolds drives in, fakes his shot, gives it over to Suli for the lead, no good. And that is gonna do it for the third quarter. Whew. Buckle up, call your friends, call your family, let them know this one. Coming down to the wire here in the castle, Northmore leads by one. We'll have the conclusion on the other side of the break. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health. Believe in we. Welcome back here into the castle. Andy Jardy alongside Travis Berardi. What a game this has turned out to be to start the came action portion of the schedule. Northmore leads by one. Centerberg looking to take the lead here on their opening possession in the fourth quarter, but it's knocked away by Hammond, but then it's taken away and they've get numbers. Suli lays it in and Centerberg has the lead. A complete 180 from the first quarter. Trojans actually playing like the team we were expecting them to be this season. I wasn't sure what to expect from them. Just looking at the numbers, they weren't all that impressive. But they are playing with some confidence here on the road. And just a 
Not enough on that pass in transition. Gives it back over to Northmore. They need a bucket. They go to Bentley. Bentley buries it from the corner to give the Golden Knights the lead. Finally gets an open shot for himself and gives Northmore the two-point lead. Once again, it's 38-36. Harris, he didn't score in the third quarter, but he gets a big three to give the lead right back over to Centerburg. Back and forth, we're gonna go. Harris now with 21 points. 18 of those coming in the first half. Kuffman pulls up, off the glass. Cole Kuffman, he's had a tough night with the fouls, but he gets a big bucket there. Like I said, it's the holidays. Banks are open a little bit later on Friday evenings. Kuffman's first points of the night. Gives Northmore the lead again, 6.18 to go. A three ball is nothing but the bottom of the net from Bennett Hill. Wide open, nothing but nylon. On the other side now, Bentley That's draws the contact, but it's an offensive foul going the other way. Jack Lawrence able to get in there and set his feet. Second foul on Bentley. As Kearns gets a breather for Northmore. Forty-two to forty. Centerburg trailed by ten at the end of the first quarter, but they have scrapped and clawed their way back, and now they've got a lead. And that is going to go back over to Northmore, trying to get it to Suli in the corner. This is, you can't do this. You have the lead now. Control the ball. Slow things down. Take your pace. And they're still trying to force the issue. So but that can be made up for with a stop. Yeah. Where does Northmore go now? A lot of contact there, but I think he just slipped. Take a look at the replay and see for sure. Yeah. Yeah, he just lost his footing. Unlucky break for the Golden Knights. So unable to capitalize off of the turnover. And now Centerberg has a chance to make it a two possession lead. Reynolds, three, money. Seven points in the second half. The lead up to five. Bentley drives in, feeds it into Hammond. Hammond, turn around, off the glass, count the bucket. Big time basket from Drew Hammond. Put him into double digits. Much needed hoop there for the Golden Knights. Foul's gonna be on Jack Lawrence's first. Hammond's free throw, no good, but able to come down with the board. They'll get another shot now. Bentley, deep from three. Oh, Grant Bentley fired the bow and arrow after the shot. We are tied at 45. Timeout. Coming off of another offensive board off the miss. And when Bentley's feeling it, he gets that. You see the Golden Knight bench going crazy. Coach Tackett calling a timeout to set things up. We got ourselves Woo! a ball game, Andy. <laughs> Goodness gracious. What a game. Just when it looked like Northmore was down and out, you know, they were kind yeah. of, they were down five all of a sudden, and it didn't look like they really were five feeling point it. Five-point possession right there. There's a five-point possession, yeah. Sometimes the missed free throw helps, right? right? Let's take a look at our... Facebook section. Let's All do our it. fans. Daniel Stott, go Golden Knights. Chris Deal, go Knights. Uh, Mr. Todd Jardy, you guys sound very good. Uh, I know that guy. Yeah, a little little biased opinion there, <laughs> if I might say so. Susie Clark, go Knights. Chad and Lori Richards, awesome shot. One, probably one of the many of Grant Bentley's tonight. Dora Brown, thanks for sharing. Go Knights. Julie Baker, we love the OH report. Well, we love you, Julie. Oh, that's very kind. And uh, Mr. Jardy, once again, good first half that we had there. Yeah. And it's even even better second half. And then Brandon Davis on YouTube. Let's go, Knights. Show who's the boss. Well, 
going back and forth so far it between is. Mr. Bentley and Mr. Harris on who's the boss. Yeah. This has been it's not Tony Danza tonight, I tell you that. <laughs> you said that. Oh, I wish people could have seen just like your face when you said that. The, the delivery was spot on. Oh, that came right to mind. My lights lit up. I'm like, <laughs> oh, this is a good one. They sure did. Suli gets it now. 4.38 to go here. All knotted up at 45. Harris spins, throws it up. Called for a travel. We'll take a look at the replay and see. Jump stop, two feet, and then that spin. He put the foot down before the contact. I mean, it could go either way there, but just he's out of control. I so I would have called nothing. Yeah. Oh, that, you know, just it was an out of control play, but I don't think he traveled. Northmore now trying to take the lead again. I think we got a foul here. Tackett wanted two shots there, but <laughs> this isn't the NBA. We're not going to get a continuation. That would have been one heck of a continuation. That's the third foul now on Blaine Ball. Second foul on Centerberg here in the fourth. And this has been a struggle for them tonight, just getting the ball in, but they succeed there. Third Thir Hammond. 13 for Drew Northmore, 7-0 run. How does Centerberg respond now? Trailed all game, finally took the lead. Reynolds for the lead again, can't get it to go. Harris unable to get the board, but a foul underneath as Ryder Scott is going to go to the line. Boy, that shot, that, that rim, Travis, there's something going on on this side of the court. That's, yeah, it's, it's something wrong with that rim. You're seeing it's not just against Northmore, but it's against <laughs> Centerberg on this side too. Scott to the line to try and tie it. A little too strong on the first one. Scott has four points tonight. This is his first trip to the line. Second one, also too strong. Harris tried to come down with the board, but it's off him, and Northmore will get possession. They've missed their last six free throws after two for two in the first half. Yeah, they've not made one here in the second half. Trevin Harris had that bizarre possession where he missed four. And that pass just a little too much on it, and it goes back over to Centerberg. 16th Golden Knight turnover. Reynolds for three, a little too strong. It ends up into the hands of Harris, but it's taken away by Hunter Folk. I think the hand in the face on that three was just enough to throw him off. Every possession crucial in this one now. Kaufman gives it to Hammond. Hammond swings it out. Northmore will look to reset now here offensively. Up two. Nice feed inside. Finds Bentley. Bentley pushes it out to a two-possession game. Beautiful entry pass. Centerberg was a little bit out of position. Golden Knights up two possessions. Under three to go. This is a 9-0 run from Northmore. 12 points in the second half for Mr. Grant Bentley. And this pass. Loose, and it's going to be... That's backcourt. Yeah. I think he said, actually, that it was out of bounds. But it should have been over and back. Either way, Northmore gets possession. A little surprised we haven't seen Centerberg take a timeout. Kind of regroup here. Yeah. Because they led this thing 45-40 in the last couple of offensive possessions they've had. Well, also, Northmore took the lead and then called that timeout. I think that's why they haven't so Could far be. but here we go though Northmore turns it right back over and that shot rejected by Hunter Falk his foot was on the line no foul call there but somehow he was able to get the deflections but then had the ball as he touched the line Centerberg. might have been a foul but yeah they give it to Harris Harris has it taken away but Kearns was out of bounds when he touched it, so it will stay here with Centerberg. But but this effort keeping them really frantic on that inbounds is what's, you know, keeping Harris from really getting anything going in this second half. And he's just got to be stronger with the ball there, too. Harris, deep two, count it. Easy money for him that time. You give him that look, he's going to hit that eight times out of ten. He has got a confident stroke. Makes it a one-possession game again. 2-11 to go as Reynolds 
playing some tight defense. Pass inside. Hammond kicks it back out. Falk with it now. Two minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Bentley gets it, drives in, circus shot. Boy, he almost made that basket the reverse way. He almost threw it in. Tried to draw the foul, saw he was too far under and just threw up a prayer. Trojans now a chance to tie or take the lead. A minute 40 to go here. Harris has it. Kearns applying the pressure defensively. But a little too aggressive there, picks up the foul. That'll be Kearns third. Team's third. And now there's that timeout by Coach John Marhefka to write things up. That's a good timeout. Good timeout. Minute 37 to go. You've got possession of the ball here. Figure out what you want to do. I think they've got to get something going to the hoop, Travis, because the last couple possessions for them have just been pull-up shots from deep. They haven't been able to convert on many of them. Yeah, and they had a good look with that open shot by Harris last time, but Golden Knights, good job guarding him thus far in this second half. He's only had five points. He did have the four misses on the free throw line early on in the third, but other than that, it's been Grayson Reynolds that has really taken over seven points in the second half. But Grant Bentley yeah, doing what he needs to do tonight with Jack Swenger on the sideline for at least another couple of weeks. This is a big game for the Golden Knights. I mean, for both teams, for the Golden Knights, if they can get one here without their top scorer, that's some momentum. As for Centerberg, if they can do this on the road, it's a lot of momentum after what they had the last two games with losses. Yeah, and it's it's not been a pretty start to the season for Centerburg. There's there's just no getting around that. Northmore's obviously been dealing with some injuries and had some had some tough losses. The Pleasant game got away from them, but the Colonel Crawford game they were in. But Bentley Center, got hurt. Yeah, Bentley gets hurt. Centerburg has just really not played. But they played great. good teams. Mount Vernon's a good team in the OCC. Sure. Uh, Granville is going to probably be in a district in Division Two, so it's not like those losses, those big losses, were to you know teams they shouldn't have lost to. Harris has the ball in the corner, feeds it inside, layup, and they go to the basket, but just unable to convert. But a good play drawn up out of the timeout. Drew Hammond has been so aggressive and so physical underneath. And now Tackett's going to get a full timeout. But Drew Hammond, him and Graham Bentley, two uh, MVP candidates if the Northmore Golden Knights pulled off. We know who would be the MVP for Centerburg <laughs> if they win. But uh, just the, if you take a look here at the replay, just the physicality that he has inside. We take a look at that possession. That was a great pass, too. Sure but look at him straight up and down, grabs the ball at its high point, brings it down, chins it. Doesn't allow Centerberg to get the strip. and Got to be close or even over a double-double again tonight for Drew Hammond rebounding and points-wise. So now is where we'll see the new foul situation come into play here because... I think, I think Centerberg will let this possession run out for a little while. Once they get down to maybe a minute if North Morsell has it, that's when they start fouling. But they could get a stop since they're only down two points. I would play... If I'm Centerberg, though, you still have to foul three more times That's before true. you get into the line. Maybe I'm, go I'm aggressive, playing aggressive on the inbounds. I'm playing aggressive here to try and get a turnover. And if not, you've got fouls that you need to start giving here before you run out of too much time. But once you get to five fouls in a quarter, you shoot two. There is no longer yep. a one and one. Yeah. Interesting. I don't. I we talked about it briefly in the first quarter. I don't like it. I think it really harms a team trying to make a comeback and force teams to miss one and ones it also in this era that we live in now of pace of play and everything you are just making games excruciatingly long at the end with two free throws every single time this is the player you want to have on the line is Grant Bentley too Hunter Falk looking and gets fouled so there you go Yeah, that'll be Bennett Hall's first number three 66 seconds left Andy Woo, woo. Buckle up. Came action, my friend. <laughs> Would expect nothing less. Kuffman's got it. Got to get it going. Yeah, about Oof. to be a five-second call there. Reynolds definitely wanted it called. He thought he had it. Good defense, and Reynolds will commit the foul there. 51 seconds to go, so they let about, what, 15 seconds come off mm -hmm. the clock there? 
Now this is where, yeah, Grant Bentley will not take it out. He's going to be the one that's going to get the ball here because he's the best free throw shooter the Golden Knights have out on the floor. Just the second foul on Reynolds. Bentley gets it. And, and there's the foul. There's the foul. So that will put him at the line to shoot two. 49 seconds to go. That's the third foul on Trevin Harris. 13 of 19 on the season is Grant Bentley from the free throw line. Tonight, two of three, make it three of four. That's big, that makes it a three point game. So even if a score down on the other end is a three, Northmore will have probably the final shot before the buzzer. This is an even bigger one to make it two possessions. Plenty of time left Money. too for Centerberg where you do not need a three. Go down and get something quickly. And they have three timeouts remaining as well. Reynolds, a lot of contact, comes up a little bit short. Ball loose, Northmore comes away with it. And timeout, Coach Tackett, a huge empty possession there from Centerberg. Taking a look at the replay here. Look, watch Drew Hammond. Once again, Drew Hammond come in here. I like the no call. Force it up trying to get the call, but I think Hammond was in position of not enough contact for the call. But nonetheless, it throws them off just enough, and then you had three Golden Knights right there for the rebound. And now we're getting into a free throw shooting contest. Yeah, and this is where if you're Centerberg, you try and get a steal quickly, but you got to be fouling here within the first 5, 10 seconds. But if you're John Marhefka in squad right now, you got to be pretty darn proud of the effort that Centerberg's put in, especially after the last two games that they played. This is the Centerberg squad that at least I thought coming into the season would be one of the top contenders in the Knoxmar Athletic Conference with Fredericktown, with Northmore, maybe another team like a Mount Gilead or Danville. So uh, positives, I know... We still have time left. They can still come back and win this, but if they don't, it's it's at least something good to look forward to as Bentley now gets it and gets across the timeline. Yeah, not who they want to foul, but who they're going to have to foul. And he does get fouled. 31 seconds to go. Bentley just made the last two free throws. 14 points. And how many did he need to get the sit third I, you place? Know, I was thinking if we had overtime, he had a chance to do it. But he needed 28 points to move into third all-time in Northmore history. And he is Then that would be Adrian it. Wilson at 1,041. Bentley up to 21, make it 22 points. He might get there, there's still time. Well now it's they need two threes. They'll try to get one here, Reynolds, shot no good. Hammond pulls down the board, they give it back to Bentley. And again, they're gonna have to foul, so Bentley will go back to the line. 19 seconds to go and it looks like Northmore is gonna survive here tonight. And these are games that in the last couple of years, the Golden Knights do not win. It's usually, you know, Centerburg or Fredericktown, a couple of those games, Mount Gilead last year, Galleon last year, that they, they were in close ones throughout. They had a lead. They let it slip away and couldn't answer. But tonight, this is a big gut check victory for North Wars. Bentley hits another free throw. He's hit his last six Knocking on wood for my friend because uh, <laughs> I haven't had the announcer jinx yet. Thank you, there Grant. You go. And a timeout is Blade Tackett with a smile and a fist pump. This was a 45 to 40 Centerberg lead here in the fourth quarter, and Northmore. You got to say the key play was the five point possession. Yeah, absolutely. Hammond takes it strong to the hole and one, and then. Off the rebound. Let's see if I can pull that up here. Because that gave them the lead again, if I'm not mistaken. That was the free throw tied it, I think, or made it a one-point game. Is this our five-point possession here? Yeah, there's the foul and one. Yep. And then. So Hammond fouled and one, missed the free throw, and then Bentley drained it 
and it was a five-point possession that really just tipped the momentum in Northmore's favor, and they never looked back. Yeah, and there were times when Centerberg had possessions to tie it, take the lead. Northmore got the stop, came down, made a bucket, started getting free throws, and it's just, you know, great <laughs> effort by both sides. You know what's the crazy thing, too? That's the only missed free throw for Northmore in the fourth quarter is that Drew Hammond missed free throw. <laughs> if, that, if that free throw goes in, it might be a completely different outcome. This is true. But that, this is true. But you know, be interesting to talk to, to Tackett after the game and say, you know, you, you want your kids to make free throws, but that missed free throw led to the second chance points in a five-point possession. That's, that's wild. Great effort here from the Trojans tonight, though. They're going to come up a little bit short. I know they don't want to – there's no moral victories. They don't go in the box score or anything, but they should feel good about where they are and how they played here tonight. Harris, three, no good. Hammond, of course, comes down with the board, and that will do it. The Northmore Golden Knights get a big win to start conference wow. play here tonight. 55-47 over Centerburg. What a game. What an effort by the Golden Knights. What an effort by Centerberg to really make this a game. But in the end, it was Grant Bentley that was able to help them finish off a 20 to 13 fourth quarter to finish things. Stick with us here on the OH Report. We'll have our Morrow County Jobs and Family Services postgame show and our Ohio Means Jobs MVP interview all for you on the other side of the break. Need a construction team that can do it all? Bo Lacey Construction delivers experience you can trust. Done right, on time. With free estimates and special financing offered for roofing, siding, gutters, windows, bathrooms, decks, to the highest standards of excellence, quality, and knowledge in the industry. Bring your next project to life with Bo Lacey Construction. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health. Believe in we. sponsors here tonight that allow us to bring you these games live and free on the OH Report. Ohio Means Jobs, Morrow County, need a current job list, help with your resume or practice interviewing. Morrow County, Ohio Means Jobs provides many services that can assist you. Stop in or give them a call at 419-946-8480. Northmore Athletic Boosters raise funds to support our Golden Knights student-athletes, coaches, and community. Go Knights! 
Morrow County Hospital, providing great care locally so patients do not have to travel far to receive quality expert health care. Bo Lacey Construction, experience you can trust, done right, and on time. Andy Bauer, Edward Jones Financial Advisor. Whether you're planning for retirement, saving for college, grandchildren, or just trying to protect the financial future of the ones you care about most, Andy can develop specific strategies to help you achieve your goals. Need a construction team that can do it all? Bo Lacey Construction delivers experience you can trust, done right, on time. With free estimates and special financing offered for roofing, siding, gutters, windows, bathrooms, decks, to the highest standards of excellence, quality, and knowledge in the industry. Bring your next project to life with Bo Lacey Construction. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health. Believe in we. Time now for our Ohio Means Jobs Morrow County MVP. It is, as our Madeline Zazuto put in his highlight, the hero of the Golden Knights. It's Grant Bentley, 24 points.
game high, currently now at 1,038. Yes, this is the man that hit 1,000 points. So this is his 1,000-point interview as well. <laughs> well deserved. First of all, Grant, congratulations on being the fourth player in the history of Northmore basketball to be a 1,000-point scorer. Well, thank you, thank you. It was really an honor. It was, it was just really a cool experience from just being able to see all the Northmore community gather around, support me. It was once-in-a-lifetime experience. Um, as Coach said in the locker room after the game, this was a dogfight. Yep, yep. This was a battle. I mean, Trevin Harris carried his squad on his back in that first half, kept them in there. They had the lead at one point. Harris had 23 points as well, yep. so just one behind you. They had the lead late. Take me through this possession. We were talking about walking up the stairs. Drew had the end one, missed the free throw, the lone miss in the fourth quarter, by the way. Yeah. Gets back out to you, and from about 10 feet behind the line, you drain a three, get the lead back, and from there, you guys cruise. Take me through that possession. What was going through your guys' minds trailing at the point to take the lead? I mean, that's just one. I, who got? Do you know who got that rebound? Because I don't. It was oh. the rebound off of that, Andy. I think it was, was it AJ? Might have been Bauer. It's somebody. Yeah, I mean, that's just that's on that's all him. That's not me. That's him going getting bored. He found Hunter on the kick out. Hunter got doubled. He kicked it. One extra pass. You know when you make that extra pass, it usually goes in. And you, you have been – I mean, you were so close to having about two or three more threes. What's up with this rim down on the other side? I, don't I know, know you practice on the opposite side, but the thing – both sides, both teams, it was in and out for about seven or eight shots. I don't know. I've always had bad luck on that, the first <laughs> half rim, but that second half rim, that's what, that's what I love. Um, balanced scoring attack from you guys tonight. Uh, talk about Drew Hammond. And I mean, what he's been able to do. I mean, the steps that he's made from last year, this year, I mean, he's put on, I think, probably 15, 20 pounds. And his rebounding ability has become just amazing. And same thing, Bryson Kearns, yeah. both of our big posts. I mean, the steps they've taken as a group, I mean, I couldn't ask for any more from my posts. So on Tuesday night, tough loss. Pleasant's a really good team. Yeah, yeah. Granville's a really good team. Centerberg lost, yeah. too. But what were you guys able to do to just erase that from your minds, reset and take on a Centerberg team that I think is going to compete in the KMAC as well, but get the win. I mean, we just take it one day at a time. And obviously that Pleasant game wasn't what we wanted, but um, we just came in, came in on Wednesday, watched some film, got our scouting report ready, and we just took it one day at a time. I'm going to hand this over to Andy now. Yep, yep, he yep. has a couple questions. Thank you, Travis. Grant, I'm just curious. Like, You guys came out, scored 20 points in that first quarter, mm -hmm. and then the next two quarters were kind of a struggle, but then yep. you guys come out with 20 points again in the fourth quarter. What kind of change there at the end of the first quarter that allowed Centerberg to get back into it? And then what did you guys find in that fourth quarter? Uh, I think that, that second quarter, they were their, their ball pressure was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. It was full court. Grayson was doing a good job. And um, our point guards, you know, it took them a little bit to get used to it. But then when we slowed it down, really got our sets ready, we, we were fine. What does a win like this do for you guys this early in the season? Because you always want to start conference playoff with a W. And so getting a win like this here at home in a game you trailed late in the fourth quarter but found a way to win, like what does a win like this do for you going forward? I mean, they should be a second, third. They're top three in the KMAC. They're a really good basketball team. And this was just one. You, want, you always start with a win, and then you just roll from there. And it was – Especially we can build some momentum. We, got, we have some younger guys on our team, and to, to have them get a couple wins under their belt, that's huge for them. So you guys now will travel to Mount Gilead. Uh, early thoughts on that matchup, and uh, what can you guys expect? I mean, they're a good basketball team. Um, I mean, we're just going to come in tomorrow. Same thing, watch some film on this, watch some film on them, get a couple shots up, go live, and just one day at a time. Well, Grant, thank you so much for joining yep, us here tonight. Congratulations on the win, eclipsing 1,000 points and, and continuing to mm -hmm. climb up the leaderboards here at Northmore. Thank you. Uh, Anyone you want to give a shout-out to in that camera? Uh, I know I got a lot of family watching out there, so the shout-out to them. All right, Grant, thank you so much. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health. Believe in we.
Wrapping things up here on the Morrow County Jobs and Family Services post-game show from the castle where Northmore gets the win tonight, 55-47 over Centerburg and an entertaining Ooh. game to say the least. This had a little bit of everything. You had some big missed uh, or some big made buckets, a couple empty possessions. Just a couple, couple balls halfway down and back out. A couple <laughs> standout performances, uh, teams just trading buckets. This was, this was a great game. We weren't quite sure what to expect. I don't know if we thought it would be this close of a game, but give a lot of credit to Centerburg for coming in here, playing confident and uh, hanging tough, and, and give a lot of credit to Northmore for getting kind of punched in the face there in that fourth quarter, down five, and then found a way to just really go on a dominating run to close this out. Well, this is why you don't look at records, especially early on in the season. Yeah. Centerburg's two losses, Mount Vernon a D1 school, maybe D2 now, and then a D2 Granville school. Both teams are probably going to play in a district semifinal at least this season with what they have. So tough losses there, but this is a Centerburg team that will compete in the KMAC, like Mr. Bentley said. Probably a top three squad there. So, you know, this is this is what the KMAC's going to look, look like throughout the season. A lot of battles between teams, and that's what makes this conference so exciting. Yeah, Centerburg won't want to hear it tonight, but, you know, they have nothing to hang their heads about Absolutely after not. this game. They're going to be upset because they didn't win it. They had a chance to win it, just unable to close it out there at the end as you take a look now at the final stats. The biggest thing to me is that discrepancy at the free throw line. Yeah. Two of eight for Centerburg. They only took a couple trips to the line, and look at Northmore, 11 of 17. Well, Centerburg was relying on the mid-range and three-point ball, maybe a little too much. Also, Northmore able to be physical enough but not – you know, go for the fouls, not swipe a lot inside. So that helped them out there. And then their ability to hit free throws. Grant Bentley, they got the ball in the right player's hands, free throw shooting down the stretch, went six of six. He was seven. He hit his last seven free throws, finished eight of nine on the night. And like I mentioned, the only free throw they missed in that fourth quarter turned out to that's, continue to a five-point play that's unbelievable. and change the game. Like I, when I realized that, that that's the only missed free throw and it led to that just absolute momentum swing in this game. It's just that's the way the that's the way the ball goes. Sometimes. The way the cookie crumbles. That's the way the cookie crumbles. So yeah, Bentley finished with 24. AJ Bauer had four. Hunter Folk seven. Drew Hammond 13. I don't have Drew Hammond's rebounds officially. He's got a double double. I, there's had no to. way he didn't have a double double tonight. That dude cleaned up the glass tonight. Cole Cupman had two, and Bryson Kearns had five. Over on the Centerburg side of things, Trevin Harris 23 points. Northmore made the adjustment, though, in the second half because he had 18 points at halftime, only had five in the second half, including four missed free throws on one possession uh, down there for Centerburg. But a great game. I've never – that was one of the most incredible performances I saw in the first half at oh, the high school level. Yes. He could not miss. No, 18 points in that first half of his 23. But then Northmore really shut him down in that second half, and that's another reason why they were able to get the win. Grayson Reynolds stepped things up then. In his absence, he had 11 points. Bennett Hill had three, Jack Lawrence two, Isaiah Suley had four, Ryder Scott with four points. So. And then score by quarter. Northmore 20 to 10, that buzzer beater by Hammond. You're thinking, oh, yeah, is it going to be a Northmore blow? But no, 14-7, Centerburg in the second quarter made it 27-24. They had a 10-8 third, making it 35-34. They had the the uh, the was it three point lead yeah. on Northmore, then the five point possession. Northmore outscores them 20 to 13 for the 55-47 final score. Yeah, we talked about it. That uh, I asked uh, Bentley about it there at the end. 20 points in that first quarter, and then they really struggled. They only scored 15 combined points in the next two quarters, but then figured it out there in the fourth quarter. Any final thoughts, Travis? Well, We're getting out of here. Both these teams uh, – Get back to the drawing board. They'll both play KMAC Tuesday night hoops. Centerburg will host Danville, squad with a lot of returning players. Northmore, a little bit of a rivalry trip down to Mount Gilead. They have not won at Mount Gilead in four years. They've Ooh. split each four, each of the four years. They won at home, lost on the road. So a big test for them. Both games around 7.30 on Tuesday night. But, yeah, that's, that's it for me. Uh, Andy, any final words for you, Mr. Play by play. Uh, no, that's all I got for you. Northmore makes it two in a row now against Centerburg as they won the last meeting last year. So that is going to do it for us here from Northmore. For our camera operator, Madeline Cizzuto, my partner, Travis Berardi, I'm Andy Jardy. Thank you for spending your evening with us here on the OH Report, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you next time.